I'm Nick and today we're at my place in southwest Sydney and I'm going to show you the excavation I've done to create a new car spot and a spot for my boat. I've used a 5 ton excavator to get rid of 40 ton of soil and sand and now I'm in need of something to solve my problem at the back of my property. I have a very tight access. I've been trying to use wheelbarrows and shovels but it just seems not to cut it. It's been taking forever and it's just too much hard work. I'm going to go to Top Hire in Padstow. I've heard about this place and see if they have anything to solve my problem. <laughs> Looks like I'm at the right place here at Top Hire in Pasto. Just gonna have a look at what they got and see what I can uh, hire to make my life a little bit easier with the tight access excavation I have to do. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How can I help you? I've come here to find a solution to throw away my shovel and wheelbarrow because I've spent countless hours shoveling back and forth from the back to the front with this um, clay and soil that I have been moving. I just wanted to know if you had any solution for moving the soil with a tight access, maybe using some of your machinery, getting down the side of the house or through the garage and seeing what's possible and what's for offer. Well, you've come to the right place. Um, we have a lot of small sized machines that uh, can fit um, through uh, narrow access, backyard doors and uh, fence doors. For your job, I would recommend um, a 1.8 tonner machine. It's only 990 millimeters wide, and so that can go through your um, narrow axis. Of course, you can dig, uh, you can move the soil, you can um, move the dirt and whatever you need. So Teta, now that I have the excavator and it's able to get to the backyard, I need a solution so I can move the soil and clay from the back of the property to the front to put it into a truck and send it to the tip or recycle it. Do you have any solutions for that? The wheelbarrow may keep your feet, but that's not the way we do the job anymore. We have the high tip mini dumpers, hydraulic ones. They're well under one meter wide and uh, you load the, uh, the dirt or the, the, the soil with the excavator um, and then you move it back to the truck where it rises up to 1.2, 1.3 meters high and just tips it to the the truck easy. So I've noticed that uh, in your factory here you have a lot of amazing equipment, some unique things. Could you just tell me a bit about what else you have for offer on hire? Well this is um, a new uh, truck Kanga. Uh, it's uh, only about a one meter wide. Um, it comes with a, a four-in-one uh, self-leveling bucket and um, it runs on diesel you, so you save on fuel as well. And um, We've got other attachments as well, trenches to dig a trench, auger drives um, to dig a vertical hole, you name it, we have it. So there is a solution for uh, small residential jobs, uh, backyard um, redoing and uh, renovations, yes, yes, you don't have to buy big machines for that. Could you tell me a little bit about what else you have here for hire? Apart from this, we've got um, plenty of um, equipment to, for hire that could be of uh, use for your um, job, um, for your landscaping. We've got uh, ride-on um, lawn mowers, log splitters and uh, wood chippers to cut the logs. We've got stump grinders to remove the stumps from the ground. For indoors, we've got tile cutters, we've got screed mixers, welding machines, plate compactors, concrete cutters, road saws, you almost have everything. you name it, we have it. And I've noticed that all your prices are very competitive with the market at the moment. Yes, I can proudly say that we are one of the cheapest businesses in the market. So with all this machinery I see around here, do you think it's better for builders to hire from you guys or is it worth to buy um, equipment like this? Well, private owners don't need to buy these machines, they're very expensive. Builders and contractors, it's a big headache to buy a machine, always um, be able to carry it on job site. So I would definitely recommend hiring businesses for that. Um, so we can organize deliveries on job site, the day and time requested. And uh, they don't have to uh, worry about maintenance of the machines. And of course they don't have to pay the whole amount for them. You just pay for the day, they need it. 
All right, now, so now I've got all my information I want. I think um, I would love this place to be like my mini garage. I think I might take that one, the uh, mini dumper, and maybe just this little dingo here just for some fun. The work in my backyard included a few large garden beds to be removed so I can create a flat area around the pool for a new decking. Getting the excavator of one metre wide through the narrow passage of my house was a difficult part. The gap was 1.2 metres wide and it was very challenging. Keeping the revs down and taking it slow was a way to do it. Having something to watch you is also a help. Once we got the machinery to the backyard and we started digging, we very quickly realised that it was much easier than using a shovel and a bucket or a wheelbarrow. The big excavator bucket made life so much more easier, moving the soil from the back to the front, using the dumper also. When operating these excavators, it was quite interesting to learn in the beginning. There is four hand levers and four foot pedals, which makes things a little complicated. It takes almost two hours to fully understand how to use the equipment, but once you do, it becomes second nature. Using four movements in your right hand and four movements in your left becomes simply easy. This tracked machine can go up and down stairs, but I really advise you to put soil to make it a lot easier for the machine, maybe not to break the step and to not put too much strain on the track. The dumper we are using takes four buckets, which is around two and a half wheelbarrows, which makes your time two and a half times quicker. The dumper of 800 wide made our lives very easy. It has high and low speed to move quickly and slowly where needed. It also had a high reach hydraulic movement which made loading the truck directly from the back to the front much easier. Another option we had with the dumper was to stockpile the soil and clay in the front yard and then getting the excavator back through the tight access and filling up the truck with the big large bucket. Tipping at a landfill was not an option for me. I'm a strong believer to reuse and recycle so my good dirt wouldn't go and be buried under hundreds and thousands of tons of rubbish and costing me thousands of dollars just to get rid of. So I began to start searching for a site or somebody that really needed good soil for their garden or for their grass. I found this place about 20 minutes away. He was a man in need of soil for his grass. My rubbish now became somebody else's treasure. I saved around two and a half thousand dollars in tipping fees and my neighbor saved about $1,500 in buying new soil. Overall, this job would have cost me a minimum of around $7,000. In actual fact, it just cost me a few hundred dollars for hiring the equipment. I was the operator of the excavator, I drove the mini dumper up and down the site, and I also drove the truck to and from the site that I was tipping at. It took me about one and a half days to complete the task. If I had some help from friends, I could have easily done the job in one day. But I was enjoying operating the machine so much, I didn't let anyone touch them. Okay, so a job well done, thanks to Top Hire at Padstow. It took one and a half days to move all the soil. It was ended up being six truckloads, using a dumper and this mini excavator. It was really easy work to do, but if you don't know how to use one of these machinery, 
it's best to use it, leave it to the professionals. You can contact us if you have any inquiries or if you need the job done. Also contact Top Hire if you would like to hire any of their equipment. I would like to give a big thank you to Dennis from All Sydney Construction for letting us use his tipper and some of his equipment from his job site. We're um, in uh, a suburb of Sydney called Vaucluse. Uh, as you can see, we've got a fantastic view all over Sydney, the Harbour Bridge, and uh, it's, it's a great, great view. And uh, here we've got a, a huge problem in the backyard. Uh, this place was occupied by this huge tree, which was cut down before. But now we have a task to take it away, take away all the stump and the roots. As you can see, it's massive. And um, what we are trying to do now is with this very small machinery we have only a one ton excavator and a little dump truck we're trying to level this area out so it could be a new barbecue area for the family here in in this house the actual access is very tight uh, we can only use this small excavator and this uh, small dumper that we got from Kenneth's hire and this little excavator from inner west demolitions um, we have tried uh, the past few days uh, different uh, ways to get it out and uh, you can see here for example how we have used uh, the hammer on this little excavator as an axe. What I've done now, I took out the bucket of the excavator and I put the hammer. This hammer is made to break concrete, to break brick, any machinery like this. This is not very sharp, this is quite blunt, so what I've done is I sharpen it it's very sharp now and basically this is going to be my axe I'm going to use this as an axe this is a hydraulic hammer if it can get into concrete and if it can get into brick I'm sure you should be able to get into timber and then uh, we used uh, uh, other systems like uh, the diamond saw uh, with a different blade to cut timber <laughs> But uh, at the end of the day, we still got a huge stump over here. We're going to uh, get rid of all the roots like we did most of them now, but we still have to um, go on the top where the stump is and we're going to use a stump grinder. We're just going to hire one and hopefully that will get us down to uh, the level we want. Uh, and then of course over there, we're just going to have to support that area over there and uh, we start the construction soon. But for now, the main task is to get rid of this. Now this is a huge uh, stump, it's like a big monster. Uh, we have tried to get under, underneath it. We basically pretty much got rid of all the roots from underneath there. Now we're gonna work from the top. We, at the moment, we're using it as a ramp, as you can see. It's, uh, it's quite uh, handy. Uh, it's very solid, it uh, it's, doesn't go anywhere and we're using it for our uh, ramp, for our dump truck to uh, take away all the sand, which of course the sand gets uh, recycled. We had uh, really good topsoil that we just uh, get rid of, we gave it away to people. And then we have uh, a lot of brickwork that we uh, recycle, we make road base out of it in different places like in um, St. Peter's. So, uh, but for now, we just gotta have to get rid of this uh, dump truck with the, uh, the sand and uh, put it on the truck and get rid of it. Okay, it looks like we pretty much done this, this monster here. As you can see now, uh, most of the, the stump is gone. There's just only a few roots here and there. Which, uh, of course, with this, this guy here, we're going to make sure that we uh, get rid of them all. Uh, we did a lot of work, but the stump grinder from Kenwood's was the one that did the job here. It was very important. Plus, the mini excavator with the hydraulic hammer that we used as an axe. As you can see now, on your um, screens.
continues. Nuts. They say, you pay nuts? Peanuts? Um, let's find a peanut. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You pay peanuts? You get what? Have a look. That's what you get. <laughs> exactly. Monkeys. I got something better for you. You pay cashews, you get rock off. <laughs> now, do you want rock off to fix your concrete? <laughs> or you want someone that knows what he's doing? I don't think you want monkeys, I don't think you want rock off. And I don't think you want these guys. Yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of cowboys out there in the, in the industry, and um, you have to be very, very careful. Now, look at these photos we took out of our job, where someone is supposed to be a handyman. His name is Ben. We cannot find him anywhere. We're going to ring him again in front of you later on, and be in another segment. This guy just pretends he's a handyman. He went over there, he just had to look at the job, he prized the job, and then he just changed these doors. Now, look at that. That's a new door, that's uh, the old lock used. Now, did he use an axe? I don't know what he used, but this, definitely this guy had no idea. The doors both closed, didn't close. The one door had about that much of a gap at the top, right? So, um, everything that he did on the job, uh, even the painting, even the little rendering that he did there, some patching up that he needed to do. Have a look at these pictures, it's shocking. Now, this lady, a mother of two, single mother of two, two teenage boys. She just works very hard. She doesn't have the time to go out there and just check out if the job was done. She paid him before she even looked at the job, before she realized that she couldn't close the doors that she just paid a lot of money for. Now we have to go back and fix it for her. But why do you have to get Rocco? Why do you have to get the monkeys and why do you have to get the cowboys at the first place? This is what we're saying. Be very, very careful. Make sure you just check their work. And before you pay any money at the end, all the money at the end, you make sure that you check their work. Or get some expert to check their work. That's one example. There's lots of examples like this. And this job in, um, over in the North Shore of Sydney. Now look at this. These are tiles that they just laid only about a week ago. Look at the... He actually laid these tiles upside down. Not with a flat surface of the slate, but the other side. Now that's a job again that we were uh, probably the second most expensive on the job. We didn't get the job. Someone else cheaper than us got the job and look at the result. So what we'll do next time was to show you how we actually put uh, new doors up and how we do the proper tiling and all that. But for now I just want to show you something because on all our jobs we try to reuse and recycle all the building materials. Everything that we get we don't throw it away. That's one thing that's very important. We don't throw away stuff. There is always someone that might just need what you're just about to throw away. So think about it before you throw it away. There's a lot of wonderful stuff is thrown away. Look at these pictures and these videos from uh, the council uh, pickups. Amazing stuff. Some really good stuff there that uh, a lot of the times it could be good for someone else. Like this wheelbarrow. Now where did I get this from? eBay. eBay, Gumtree, Trading Post, all those things. Try them. Don't throw anything away. And if you want to buy something, just go in there and have a look. But be very careful. There's a lot of traps there in the internet with eBay and Gumtree. Now, there's a lot of um, tricks there uh, that they can actually get your money. I'll explain to you how they do it and you, what you have to be very careful of. But if you be careful of these people and you know how they work, you can use Gumtree and you can use eBay. Now, look at this beautiful wheelbarrow we picked up for $30 from eBay. That's probably about 1930s because if you look at the um, rivets here, that's a very old construction. It just works like it was just bought yesterday. I, <laughs> I used it, yes. Uh, an amazing piece for $30, which you can put in your garden. So use the eBay, use the Gumtree, all these wonderful things on the internet. There's no training post anymore. There's no Cinemony Herald. That means that we, we cannot sell something that we have. Well, give away. Just give it away, but don't throw it away. Just do what we do. We never throw anything away. Look at beautiful materials that we get on different jobs. We always advertise them. We get something for it. We give them away. But we don't throw it away. What I'm doing.
doing here today, I am just cutting this uh, purlin, which is made out of steel. We're going to see how we're going to use this in a job uh, doing soaring, S-H-O-R-I-N-G, supporting some excavation sites basically. But what I'm doing here now, I'm cutting it. Now, you would just think cutting some steel, it's nothing to show, it's very easy, anybody can do it. Well, just think again. Have a look at this video, how this guy tried to cut this perlon. Now you think this is funny, huh? Eh? It could be you. If you don't know how to use a grinder, just don't do it. Let the solutioners do it for you. But here I'll explain to you how we're going to do it properly. First of all, I'm not even using a big grinder like he did. I mean, what he was doing wrong, he was using the grinder for grinding. He wasn't cutting. And the other thing that he was doing wrong is, a, I mean, a much bigger grinder than this one. I'm going to do it with that little one, that little bit, that little, little tiny little grinder. Now, look, the grinding disc I'm using, it's for steel and stainless steel, right? Look how thin it is. Now that's for cutting. Different discs for cutting, different for grinding. So, before I cut it off, you have to remember protection. It's very, very important. Now, uh, some good gloves, like this one's here, they're not expensive, seven, eight dollars, and nice leather, they last you for a long time, they'll be good, of course, but then the other thing is protection over your eyes. Now, you say, say oh, well, go glasses, so it doesn't matter. No, it does matter, because these sparks, the little sparks can go anywhere, including to the side of your eyes. Now, a lot of people, they would just go for something like this, right? Again, that's wrong. Look, it doesn't cover your eyes all around. And these little things, you have to be very careful with them. So I go to something more sophisticated like this one here. No, this are not for diving. This are for actually cutting. And uh, of course this one's here, you know, a lot cheaper. Still effective though. It doesn't matter. Cheap, but still it's going to save you your eye. You've got two, you say. Huh? You, don't matter. you don't mind if you lose one. No, you just look after your eyes. Look after your eyes. So basically, I'm going to wear this just on top of my glasses. Because it covers me pretty well, you see. And I'm gonna put my gloves on. And then I'm gonna cut it. Remember, we're cutting it. We're not grinding it. Look at this guy again. Look, he's actually grinding the steel. He's not cutting it. So here, we're just gonna cut it. As you're cutting the steel, you're gonna be pushing it a little bit. So it's a good idea just to just use a nail or your drill. You just drill a screw onto your timber and then you can push your steel against it so it just doesn't go away as you're pushing with your grinder. Okay, rule number three. Don't use just one hand with a grinder. And make sure you don't put other blades on the grinders. Don't put circular saw blades or anything like that and cut wood with it. Very, very dangerous. Okay, both hands, firm grip, and off you go. And remember to watch where your spark's gonna go. Try it out first, see where the spark's gonna go. Make sure you do have some fire extinguisher with you, but make the, the sparks, you have to make sure that they're not going to go somewhere that is flammable. Okay, so let's have a go. So, you see, the little grinder, it cut that much faster. The sparks were going the opposite way, they weren't coming on to me. I don't want the sparks to come to my trousers or to this, that's plastic. Okay, so that's what the, th the things you have to remember.